My name is John V. Welcome to Chautauqua People. My guest today is Hugh Butler, the outgoing president of Chautauqua Property Owners Association. Hugh is an Army Air Force brat mm -hmm. who's traveled around the country, currently lives in Chautauqua year-round, and I understand you had a background doing computer work. Could you tell us about that? Sure. Thanks, John. Uh, software was, was my business uh, and uh, eventually applied it to credit unions, particularly small credit unions. And we became one of the leading suppliers of such software, what called a system, a credit union management system, to credit unions all over the country, including right here in Chautauqua County. And how did you get from credit unions to Chautauqua? We were going from one credit union to another, and um, my wife uh, and I traveled in those days with uh, our son, who was a two and a half, uh, and uh, we would take turns uh, to, uh, taking care of the credit unions, taking care of the software and some of the equipment. Uh, we had uh, two appointments, one in Elmira uh, and the other in Mayville. So that July 4th weekend of 1988, we were traveling on Highway 17 from Elmira to Mayville. Uh, and uh, on the highway, uh, which, as you know, was, was in those days particularly very rural, uh, right. uh, two-lane sort of uh, thing, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a crowd of people were cro crossing the road. Uh, we had to stop the car, and, and we wondered, where in, the, where in the world these people come from? Uh, when we asked the, our friends at the credit union, they told us that the Chautauqua Institution was uh, there and explained a little bit about it enough to pique my interest. Uh, I came back uh, in the afternoon, I think, to, uh, to, to find out more about it and uh, got involved with the Visitors Bureau people at the, uh, uh, the Welcome Center, now called the Welcome Center. Then it was clearly a, a rail station. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, they tried to explain to me what we could do inside. Uh, and finally, just out of frustration, not being able to explain it very well, they let me in. Right. So my wife and son are out in the car, <laughs> parked, you know, waiting, and they don't know what's happening. They let you uh, in without a gate pass? They did. My I goodness. Actually, uh, they, they opened the, uh, the Dutch door, and, and in I went. Okay. Uh, and it was that experience which we've had in, in watching The Wizard of Oz where it goes from black and white to color. Correct. And I had that experience uh, that, that you get inside the grounds uh, and all of a sudden there are places called the Tall House or the, the uh, Pennsylvania Apartments and they have signs and they're painted these uh, gaily uh, multicolors. Uh, and it's obviously a walking community, which is something I, I, I always dearly love. Uh, so we made plans to move right then and there. We, we uh, uh, checked out of the hotel we were at and found uh, rooms in the hotel. And ever since then, the three of us, my wife and our youngest son, have been coming here. So we've come here every summer since. Since 1988. That's right. How long did you stay that first year? Uh, the first year, just two days, just right. enough to get a lecture and a concert in, and uh, we had work to do as well, so mm -hmm. we were uh, on a schedule. The following year, we spent uh, a week at the hotel, okay. uh, and then the year after, uh, we began a whole series of, of rentals, and uh, our, we had two goals. One was to stay longer, and we were able to stay two weeks the, the following year right. uh, and more. The other goal was to bring family and friends. Right. And we started doing that right away as well. We brought our uh, other sons out, uh, and then uh, Marcia's parents and my parents. Right. And, and so bit by bit, we added cousins and friends over the years. Right. Now, um, do you remember any of those early programs that you attended? Well, I certainly remember the first one uh, because uh, it was my first Chautauqua lecture. Uh, Dave Kessler, the, the chief of the Food and Drug Administration, came out in his uniform. He was, right. He was talking, I remember, about the FDA having uniformed people uh, right. to do their work. Uh, and this was a time when there was a kind of a, a, a controversy about uh, uh, that the wrinkle 
cream right uh, i remember so there was that uh, uh other lectures and concerts uh uh, we remembered so well. Uh, I remember being in the audience for uh, Roger Rosenblatt uh, early on and uh, his 94 lecture. I remember Loretta LaRouche when she was here when right. Dan, Dan Bratton uh, right. uh, had the encounter on stage with her. Uh, very uh, you know, personal moments. Really. Right. Um, right. Now, you came then, and do you have any academic background that might have been called upon from uh, at Chautauqua? Well, I, uh, I think that uh, my general interest in history, uh, my undergraduate years in U at Utah State University, certainly blends in really well. Right. Uh, and, and I continued to, to be a library buff. Uh, and and here, here you are where everyone is a reader. Right. Uh, so that's, that's an extraordinary connection. Uh, later on, as uh, we were in the process of selling that software company in the early part of the 21st century, right. uh, I, I took training in a, a graduate level in urban planning. Right. Uh, and so urban planning uh, fits in so well with the things I really care about, and it fits in exactly well with Chautauqua. Correct. So. Correct. Now, do you, do you regard Chautauqua as a well-planned community? Well. I, I'm not sure if it was planned at all. I okay. mean, I, I know something of the history of the layout of the right. grounds, uh, and some of the the things that have happened historically prevented Ch Chautauqua from actually going through the stage that so many of American cities went through in the post World War II era, right. where they took apart all of the lovely neighborhoods that used to be. Uh, like this, close in and right. walkable, right. and and with porches uh, with uh, very small uh, setbacks, uh, and those neighborhoods were destroyed uh, in favor of uh, broad highways, avenues, and my favorite so. is building Route 33 through Buffalo through that Olmsted Parkway, yeah. and what I remember that as a child, absolutely spectacular, right. and so Chautauqua has preserved that. Now Chautauqua itself is that is a walking community, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's. To, to walk here is a sublime experience. Uh, and uh, As part of uh, the urban planning uh, motif, I had read Jane Jacobs' uh, great book, the, the Death and Life of the American City, and uh, she talks about walking and, and the importance of the experience of walking and that it must be interesting. Right. Uh, uh, and, and she was decrying New York City at the time and how they were constructing buildings that, that had first floor solid concrete, no windows, no entries, no, no uh, adornment. Uh, and, uh, and all you can feel when you're walking down a street like that is bored, uh, silly, it's a long walk, you don't care for it. Mm -hmm. In Chautauqua, we walk everywhere. Everyone right. walks at Chautauqua, uh, and if they can't walk, they ride a bike or take a scooter, and uh, and every walk is interesting. It is, yeah. and uh, it, I think it promotes good health too, does it not? Well, of course, I believe that. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Now let's tie this together. And you came to Chautauqua those early years. You rented, and now you find yourself having run through the um, very important position of being president of CPUA. How did you get there? Well, that's uh, tied in as well, too. The, the Property Owners Association uh, is not like other property owners associations uh, that you might have experience with, uh, for instance, in a condo or, right. or a gated community. Uh, our responsibility here, our mission is the quality of life on the grounds, to preserve and enhance that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and we're an all-volunteer organization. We, we collect uh, small dues to support the, the work of the volunteer board members and committee members and so right. forth. We're a, a, a parallel organization, you might say, to the institution itself, which has a, a New York State charter right. uh, dating back to the, to the first of the 20th century. Uh, the Property Owners Association grew out of uh, one, one need that we clearly had, which is to uh, s select and promote nominees to serve on the corporation board right. that, that uh, governs the institution. Right. So each year uh, our nominating committee 
chooses and our board approves a nominee uh, to potentially sit on that uh, on the on that 24 member board. So we have we have four right, uh, right. That, that sit there. So the property owners are, are represented that way. Uh, we collect uh, <coughs> volunteer information. We th we uh, throw events uh, uh, like uh, potluck dinners and uh, picnics, uh, all with an idea that there is a there's something going on here besides <laughs> lectures and concerts. Right. There's a community event right. going on here. Right. We we are uh, living together. Right. As well as learning together and playing together and doing all these right. things. So. Right. Now tell me about the CPOA Executive Committee. Who that's composed of? Well, our our uh, Executive Committee members are uh, recruited area by area. In most cases, the officers right. uh, uh, typically will have been people that we've come to know over the years who've volunteered in right. some capacity. The trustees uh, uh, also, typically people who have produced and shown a, a, an extra caring for the environment, the, right. the neighborhood right. uh, and, and the institution and how we relate to that. Uh, the, uh, the, the governance is fairly simple. That is, we, we don't raise a lot of money, we don't spend a lot of money, right. but, but we spend it in in pointed fashion, you know, we we uh, have standing committees. For instance, uh, uh, the Transportation Safety Committee, which I chaired, right, uh, and continue to chair and work on uh, the outdoor lighting uh, group that had become a, uh, a committee once the task force had, had designed. Right, uh, uh, those are those are important initiatives by the right. CPOA. Right. Let's talk about the transportation. Uh, safety committee. Tell us how long they've been around. What was their origin? What have they accomplished? Well, the uh, the history uh, goes way back. Uh, that the everyone who comes to Chautauqua is very aware, hyper aware, you could say, of traffic. Right. Uh, right. Bicycle traffic, pedestrian traffic, automobile traffic. Even though we say that this is a walking community. Uh, if you've got tradesmen, you've got people that that are uh, uh, that need a car, right. and so there are cars here, and uh, and and there are implications to that. We have right. to we have to 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 the institution blocks off some roads so we can have nothing but bike and pedestrian traffic basically on those roads. Provides a, a transportation system that uh, uh, analysts have said is is uh, a leader. In, right. in, in such transportation, right. so anywhere on the grounds that you live, you could catch a bus right. uh, that comes by regularly, and you can catch one as it's walking as you're walking along. Right. Our trans safety committee has considered that the bus routes and right. where they go and who they serve. Right. Uh, we considered uh, traffic rules, uh, and uh, there's a great deal of debate about the relationship between, particularly bicyclists and uh, uh, pedestrians. Uh, so over time, that committee had uh, had adopted a few rules. When I took chairmanship, I wanted to take a uh, a view of of marketing a concept. Uh, this concept that that what we have in Chautauqua is a precious environment, right. and that walk that the peaceful nature uh, of that walk uh, is is the result of, of respect, mutual respect and awareness right. uh, by, by everyone. Right. Uh, plus, there's a safety factor to it. Right. And my urban planning reading and training had, had told me that uh, there was a, a, a kind of a worldwide movement toward a thing called new urbanism. Right. And Chautauqua is one of those pinnacle places. It's one place that new urbanists love to come to and visit for this reason. And many of those had adopted a, a principle that in, in Europe is called a, a vunerif, uh and uh, translated that basically means shared space. And so it's often called that in the U.S. and, and other countries that are adopting this. It, it's a, an environment that recognizes that you have all individuals of ages, mobility, uh, modes of transportation coming together. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what do we do about that? And the answer is awareness and respect uh, and, and care, just to, to care in that environment. Uh, we wanted particularly bicyclists to make eye contact 
before they you know, ran through an intersection. Right. I'm not yeah. asking them to stop. I'm just asking yeah. them to, you know. And, and so what you're talking about, there are a large number of bicycles, are there not? Oh, yes. Uh, and, and what age groups ride bicycles? Well, all age groups that you talk about, every age group uh, does, but uh, it's uh, when, when the Boys and Girls Club starts in the morning, you can see uh, what appears to be and is hundreds of, of children aged 5 to 15 all trying to go pretty much to the same place, all on bicycles. Right. So it's, it's a phenomenon. And then you go down there and you see all those racks of bicycles, hundreds of them, hundreds of them together. Yes. So tell me about meeting and how, how that experience should be governed. And we have a, we have a European word. Um, we want people to be mindful and respectful. Has that worked? I, I think so. I, I certainly see people who recognize this logo. Uh, so, so this was developed uh, uh, by s uh, artists and, uh, and is part of everything that CPUA does now. We, right. we put this logo everywhere and it's available for yard signs. And Let me hold it up and why don't you point out some of the key spots that are on here. Well, as I said, we're, we're multi-generational. So you can see people of all ages uh, and, and all modes of travel too and they are in different neighborhoods. Uh, one of the things we learned uh, from uh, uh, an Australian writer was that uh, people go through their own neighborhood very slowly and carefully, but when they're in someone else's neighborhood, they tend to rush through as fast as possible. And we wanted to get that, men that issue on the table. Mm -hmm. And by putting this logo on so many items as we have and repeating it over the last five years, I, th I think there is an awareness. We also have a children's school song that was written specifically to support this. Right. Uh, the CPOA dues pay for these shirts to be worn by club counselors and children's school counselors every Tuesday during the season. Okay. So we expect that the children are going to recognize the, the logo. They will have talked about it in their in their classes. We hope they talk about it to their parents as well. Right. Uh, and CPOA publishes uh, supporting materials and, and we develop uh, concepts around this, this, what I think is a very positive motif. Mm -hmm. It's a good story about how to be respectful and aware and to make a sublime environment that we can all enjoy. I think you're right. What's on the back? Well, Think It, Act It, Encourage It is a, a kind of a, a, an action statement that one of our committee members uh, developed. Uh, uh, and so, so we're not passive about this. We're not simply saying, isn't Chautauqua a wonderful place? Well, like any place, it is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. And in particular, when you have such an intimate place, that is, we are cheek by a jowl. Uh, uh, during the season, 10,000 people are on the grounds right. during any particular day. Right. So uh, you're, you, you really need to be aware of the people around you. You can't just go anywhere you want at any speed you want. And uh -huh. we, wanted to, we wanted to make that a, 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 a strong statement. Right. My perspective is particularly for kids, when most of them have heard this lecture a few times, they slow down and, and we still have some, some issues. But most of them are, my perspective is much better on bicycles, more attentive to others, particularly the older, they're attentive to older people who, who are, are, you know, good Chautauquans and have just as much right to the street as the kids do. Right. And, right. and my hunch is if we looked at the numbers, we'd see probably there are fewer incidents, um, collisions, pedestrian collisions with bicycles than there were before the program came along. Well, we, our, our committee gets a lot of uh, remarks and complaints over the years. Thankfully, most of them are about near misses. There are very, very few of them actual accidents. Right. Uh, we have more solo accidents on bicycles we than do. we have collisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, one of the items that people kidded about Chautauqua is dogs. Is it, did a dog make it to this shirt here? 
There's one. Yes, absolutely. Right there. Absolutely. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't, wouldn't be real without someone walking a dog. That's correct. And we want that person to be really aware of where the le leash is. You bet. <laughs> and we really encourage those very, or discourage those very long leashes, do we not? Yes, right. Those things are, uh, are immensely dangerous. There, there have been a couple of reported uh, incidences where that's happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell me about um, CP Way? And tell me about the issue of lighting, and that's one of the things where they've made some progress. Oh yes, that's a it's a good story, John. The uh, uh, task force that Donna Zellers chaired five years ago plus uh, started basically with one premise, which was that the lighting at Chautauqua was old, and it would shortly be illegal. It was mercury vapor in so many cases. Uh, and uh, uh, certainly energy, not energy efficient at all, and not well liked either. Right. Uh, in no way was the lighting, or is the lighting in so many places still uh, commensurate with the kind of village atmosphere and the, the kind of friendly, uh, welcoming place that you'd want to, to be. Very standard uh, uh, electrical uh, company sort of approach. So we, we got lucky that year. Uh, right away, uh, the Bird Tree and Garden Club, I noticed, was having a speaker, Terry McGowan, who's an expert uh, identified by the IEEE uh, Association uh, on dark sky. Mm -hmm. And I'd perhaps heard something about dark sky here and there, but uh, never really thought about it much. We uh, w went to hear Terry talk, and then invited him in to the task force, and over the next year to two years, we became educated uh, on what was good lighting, uh, which is not in-your-face lighting. Right. It's on-the-surface lighting. It's right. lighting that does what lighting should do, which is to show you where you're walking. Right. Uh, the lighting that's in your face, that's so often the, the case for outdoor lighting, uh, creates uh, sharp shadows with deep black uh, places right on curbs, sidewalks, tree roots, everything that you want to avoid when you're walking or right. be careful around, you, you can't see it right. with, with a, a light shining in your eyes right. and, and, and the harsh light. So once we learned from Terry, once we learned about dark sky and, and better outdoor door lighting, we, we went to the community. CPOA uh, began a standing committee, which Bill Netches still chairs, uh, to uh, uh, research what the community wanted to get to replace the lighting that we now have. Right. Uh, and over the course of two summers, Bill conducted surveys and walkabouts at night to get people to understand, and CPOA bought a demonstration uh, light that was uh, beautifully soft and downward facing, uh, no glare difficulties. Uh, a lot of people came to those walkabouts and said, uh, I don't understand, Why, w w what kind of light is this? It's not, it's not a typical outdoor light. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, think about it. You know, look, look at the result here, you can see and you can see what matters, and and you're not having your eyes uh, over over glared. Yeah. Uh, and of course, as you know, we'd had complaints about glare uh, from almost every lamp on the grounds. Again, we're cheek by jowl here. The you, that light is only ten feet away from your bedroom window or right. your porch, and that and so people have been painting or hooding the, the lights. Right. So, so here we have uh, 180 or 200 watt lamps of which half of the light was going straight up into the sky where it's useless and the other half was going into someone's eye that they, they, they wanted to black out. Uh, real waste uh, in every way, not attractive at all, not useful. I know I have a family member who has a recently constructed home by Chautauqua standards. There's a skylight in the master bedroom on the second floor. Outside is a mercury vapor light on a tall pole, mm -hmm. and you can sit in his bedroom at the right position. You can read in the middle of the night by that street light. Yeah. And we know people rest better when the room is absolutely dark. Yeah. And also, in terms of using outside facilities like a porch, it, it makes you feel a whole lot better when you don't, you're not 
light it up when you're in the middle of a stadium. That's right. Yeah, a, a nice warm light, too. The, the color of light matters. Right. Uh, the standard electrical company street lamp is mm -hmm. uh, a high-frequency white, or worse, it's one of those yellow sodium right. uh, uh, lamps that, that make every, the thing look like a construction project. Right. Uh, so w we can do better than that. We are doing better than that. The institution is already adopting some of the principles that we've researched. Uh, the Department of Energy showed interest in what we were doing uh, and has awarded us a gateway status. Uh, we and Stanford University are the only locations in the country that the DOE has recognized as a demonstration spot for pedestrian-friendly lighting. Right. Uh, now, could you tell me about the planned experiment behind Norton all this summer? It's, it's, a, it's an emerging thing, John. It, uh, it, it just happened. Uh, I knew uh, that the, there was going to be a, a rain garden, and as part of the o institution's overall stormwater management uh, program, uh, and uh, thanks to a generous benefactor, a garden was going to be uh, created there. So I knew that that was happening, but it didn't occur to me that there might be a lighting event. Uh, well, we found out uh, when they started to uh, to dig, they needed to remove two national grid uh, out uh, uh, the tall the poles, very yeah. tall poles mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, with the uh, mercury vapor on. So they did. So they removed those, and we asked the question just a month ago, a month and a half ago, what are you going to do to light that street? Uh, it's called Upper Route. Uh, and uh, thanks to a, a, a property owner, CPOA uh, member uh, donation and guidance, and thanks to a meeting with the institution, they were able to negotiate three of our chosen um, lamps. Right. Uh, the luminaires will go up. We, ho we hope this week. We hope they're ready for the season. Uh, it was a last-minute sort of thing, and they have to be shipped in from Italy, so you know, stay tuned. Right. Uh, but I think we will have... Uh, uh, of course, we already have the demonstration lights that we used, that right. we purchased before, right. and they're available, but they're on Bester Plaza, right. surrounded by other lighting. Right. The beauty of the Norton Hall installation is, uh, the upper root installation is, I think you will see a transformative park there by that rain garden, okay. a whole new environment. And so those should be dark sky lights, yes, should they, they not? Be. And they what's will the power be. consumption? New versus old fixtures. There, there was a tuning issue. Uh, the I believe the uh, the fixtures could go as high as 36 watts. They're okay. LED. Right. Uh, but that was survey showed it was too harsh. It was unnecessary right. to be that bright. Right. So they tuned it down. I think it's down to 27 watts. So 27 watts, and that'll replace what size bulb? Well, the three fixtures will replace the two 200 watt mercury vapor. So, so we're then so talking about uh, 400 to less than 100 watts. Less than 100 watts, and that that has great application, does it not? Not just on the grounds, but throughout the county and the state. Uh, we we've been told that people will visit us. The reason DOE is publishing this right. is uh, uh, we didn't get grant money or anything like that right. for it. They they just want the recognition that someone somewhere is doing something to test the pedestrian environment and make it more friendly. So Great. we expect attention. Great. In our remaining few minutes or few seconds here, where do you see CPOA going in the future? Well, uh, that's up to the next board and president, of course, and I, I, uh, mm. I certainly want to stay active in the transportation safety area. Uh, the most exciting area that, that I think uh, would, would be a plus for our property owners would be a campus-wide network of high uh, of capacity, fiber optic. Right. That right. would be exciting. Great. Hugh, thank you very much for your service to all Chautauquans. Thank you, John.